Hello, everybody, again on our channel. Today we have uh, as a guest uh, Kumi from Ghana, Africa. He's the founder of uh, Bitcoin Coverage Project, uh, another community that's trying to create a circular economy built on Bitcoin. So, uh, hello, Kumi. How are you? Pleasure to have you here. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Ivan. I'm doing good. Uh, feels good to have you here as well. Okay. Uh, so, I'm happy to be here. Cool. So, it looks like um, Africa is experiencing now the biggest boom of Bitcoin circular economy in the world. So uh, it's very interesting to talk to you about uh, that as a, as a part of this movement. And uh, tell me, please, um, how do you see this process and what is, um, in your opinion, the main reason for Africa adopting Bitcoin so far? So um, thank you very much for having me on. So my background, I'm a broadcast journalist and uh, a digital marketer. So. I uh, happen to have a lot of information about what is going on in Ghana and then what is happening around the world. Uh, I would say one of the major driving factors is um, borderless ease of life. I would say uh, Africa is moving so fast towards the Bitcoin circular economy because uh, it is introducing us to a more efficient lifestyle. If you look at our current systems, that we have, and then the introduction of Bitcoin and the capabilities it brings. You realize uh, you were living in kind of a locked up society. Now you are getting opened up to the rest of the world. I think getting opened up to the rest of the world and accessibility to information and services is one of the driving factors to circular economies springing up uh, currently in Ghana and the rest of Africa. Cool. You said that you are a journalist, but how, how did you get yeah. in the Bitcoin space and uh, yeah. what was your motivation to create this project? So uh, being a journalist, of course, you would have to do a lot of research you need to read. So back in 2016, uh, a friend of mine got back from Prague who came to tell me about Bitcoin. I did my research on it. I started reading about it, but I kept the information to myself until the Bitcoin Africa conference which came two years ago uh, I decided all right you, you have this information that this world has and you can see what is happening in Bitcoin circular economies you are seeing the development in Bitcoin stand up for the fight now the conference is here you are looking out for a window of uh, confidence something you could stand up for because back in the day if you were talking about Bitcoin People were looking at you like a scammer because some people came into the country with the name of Bitcoin, but at the end of the day, we're not real Bitcoin, but shit coins. So people ran at a loss. So you were scared to stand up to actually speak for Bitcoin. But when the conference came in, I saw the kind of big trees that came to the conference. I saw a lot of information. Then I got to know, oh, okay, I could actually stand up for it and then look forward to sharing my knowledge with other people around Ghana. And yeah, it started from there. So uh, uh, did you see any other uh, example like a Bitcoin Ekasi and you did you want uh, did you want to replicate or how did you get uh, the idea to create this project? So yes, uh, first and foremost, I might say uh, I met Herman from Bitcoin Ekasi at the first ever Bitcoin Africa conference. And before that, I was looking at what Bitcoin Ecosy is doing on Twitter. I was okay. following up with Paco. I was following up with Sachs, Joseph, and then a couple of other Bitcoins. Then I was learning more. I got to realize, wow, so South Africa is already having an economy thriving of Bitcoin. Really? Then I must pay me more. So when Herman came, I introduced myself to him. He told me, yo, Dude, if you really want to do this, then you have to upgrade your knowledge in Bitcoin. This is where you need to learn more about Bitcoin. I know you have prior knowledge, but I need you to study Bitcoin a bit. So after a couple of lessons, he said to me, okay, what is your approach? What do you want to do? I said to him, I want to go out because I'm a journalist. I'm able to communicate freely with people. I want to go out. I want to start talking to people. Then he said to me, all right, I'll help you out. I'm going to get you some funds go out there and start talking to people, preach the gospel of Bitcoin, let me see how it goes. So from one meeting to another meeting, then the third meeting, I'm having a Bitcoin meetup, the first ever meetup in Abuzumi. And there has never been a meetup like that, a Bitcoin only meetup like that in the whole of Ghana at that time. 
I go a lot, a lot, a lot of participants coming. I introduce them to Bitcoin. I give them materials to read. I met Anita Porsche at the first ever Bitcoin Africa conference as well. And she had this leaflet she was using to orange people. people. She actually hosted a Bitcoin, a, a Bitcoin meetup with me on the top of the Africa Bitcoin conference. Mm -hmm. And then she showed me the leaflet. The leaflet had all it takes to orange pill someone. What is Bitcoin, cold wallet, every information you need to know about Bitcoin. It was on that information. And it had some materials with the scan to um, get your wallets and all of that. So I took those materials with me to Abuzome. We did our first meetup. I learned a couple of lessons. I shared the report with Herman and said, all right, you're doing good. I'm going to make sure you be able to do this. And then from there, from one meetup in one location to the other and to the other, then we go hooked up with Trezor. Trezor Academy, I met uh, Joseph as well at the first ever uh, Bitcoin in Africa conference. Then Joseph said to me, Okay, I will keep in touch when I go to uh, Czech Republic. Don't know when Joseph was observing how, how uh, the meetups were coming up. Then he said to me, okay, we're going to do Treasure Academy. It's aimed at onboarding people, educating people to the Bitcoin standard. And we see you're doing that already. We are going to help you to be able to do that. So Treasure came in and then we gave it to the Bitcoinator. Uh, together with Bitcoin carries, we gave that to the Bitcoinator. Uh, the Bitcoinator is basically a Bitcoin education van on Wales. A Bitcoin education library on Wales is going to travel just like we were doing without a van, moving around places to places, uh, having meetups, arranging, killing people, onboarding shops. The van is going to facilitate that now. It's going to be in grand style. Usually we were walking and going there. We didn't have Bitcoin written all over us. But the van has Bitcoin visibly uh, written on it, and it's carrying educational materials. One thing we are doing currently is um, having contacts with a lot of communities because we are going to move by the end of this February. The van is going to start exports. Uh, we have a planned TV and radio tour. We want to go mainstream a bit with what we are doing. Uh, it was just between the communities. And now we feel it's time to get into the media to step up and then uh, tell people about what Bitcoin Carries is doing, what Trezor Academy is helping us achieve with Bitcoin adoption, educating Bitcoin uh, to people across Ghana and then the rest of Africa as well. That's a fantastic story. So uh, tell me, uh, what is uh, Bitcoin Carries about? So you teaching uh, about the Bitcoin? Uh, so you you doing meetups? Uh, how you how is your approach to the people in in your community? So um, our approach is basically uh, simple. This is uh, this is what I use, and I uh, I usually share with people so they can understand how I am able to go into the local communities and get things going out there. Uh, I've lived all my life in Ghana and I understand how the community systems work. In every community, there are influencers who control smaller, smaller sections of the community. So when I want to go into an area, I look out for who these influencers are. Then I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them. I talk to them about Bitcoin. They are my first study. I talk to them about Bitcoin. I get them to understand what Bitcoin is. Basically simple. Get them to see what Bitcoin is how to get a Bitcoin wallet, how to self-custody, how to send and receive Bitcoin, how to use Bitcoin in real life situations. So one of the real life situations commonly in Ghana is, okay, uh, how do you get Bitcoin? Probably I might send you Bitcoin, but how do you verify this is real cash that you have? It is equivalent to any kind of money you have. You can basically demonstrate me buying airtime or data. And then mind you, this is Africa. It's not everybody that has access to internet or a smartphone. So you start from the basic. And the basic, uh, Metron Kura came in and it's been, an, it's been an awesome tool for uh, teaching people to understand Bitcoin very, very simple in Africa. Because you don't need internet and then you don't need a smartphone to be actually able to access it. It's easy. You use the USAID. So once you give them this example, you enter into the influencer and you, you create a good rapport with the influencer. You establish a good relationship with the influencer. Then you come back to the influencer and say, I have this, this knowledge and I didn't want to keep it to myself. 
the same way I've, uh, I've given you this information. Can we share it to your community? I'm willing to get a space. I'm willing to come with my people. We have educational resources to teach your community about Bitcoin. How about that? They're like, oh, okay, if you're going to do this at no one's cost, then uh, let's do this. So sometimes uh, one of I look at the environment as well. What is the basic culture of the people? What is the money in of the people? Are the youths on there? Are they farmers? Are they artisans? Are they musicians? Are they st mostly students? So you look out for the demographic of the people, the, what you're doing. Then you do a little bit of research about, okay, so let's say the demographic you're going has a lot of students or have a lot of artists. Then you must research about how artists can live their daily lifestyles applying Bitcoin in their daily lives. So what is it you can apply? I start introducing them to Bitcoin, uh, giving them the Bitcoin standard, what to read, how to set up wallets, how to send and receive. What is it they can do practically with their lifestyles to enable them to want to actually be on the Bitcoin standard as well? So if you do your research, you find out if you are access, you look out for what platforms they can put your songs, your ads first on there that they can actually um, have, start to develop a lifestyle from their music. If your family, what is it you can do with them to actually get them to have more interest with Bitcoin? So our approach is not basically um, you go into a community, you, you call a few people together, you do a meetup, and then you leave them as well. It's like a whole process um, all together. So let me give you an example. Our two upcoming tours have two targets. So um, the first target is a group of Kip Fit clubs in Cape Coast. It's a catch catchment area. So we found our way into the head of the Cape Fit clubs, and then we started introducing them to Bitcoin, the heads of the Cape Fit clubs. And it's been two weeks down the line, their interest has grown, they are all excited about Bitcoin. Now in two weeks, we are gonna go there in full glamour with the Bitcoin data. So we already have a set of people already there. We have a, a set of crowd we are going into. They are fitness people. Now our research is going to be what is it this fitness people can, can apply in their daily lifestyles using Bitcoin along the way to make their lives better. So if you combine all of these things together, and that has been Bitcoin Kari's approach, basically um, traditional, practical way of introducing people to the Bitcoin standard. And one of the interesting things is anybody that gets introduced to Bitcoin from the basic way we do it, from when you don't need a smartphone and you don't need an internet to when you get to see, oh, you can use an internet and you can use a smartphone, oh, there's cold storage and you, you get to see the flows of information and then the abundance of opportunities Bitcoin opens up for you. I have not seen anybody rejected or pointed a finger at us ever since we started this journey. There's been a lot of um, pressure because everybody wants you to come into their community uh, to host the meetup here and there. But then we want it in this kind of organized manner. So you know you are targeting groups of people and you know you can access them over time. Yeah. That, uh, so basically that's, that's, that's what Bitcoin is. That's our approach. That's fantastic. It's, it's very interesting to see the the differences in the approach uh, from the different community and different parts of the world. Uh, one is targeting the kids, the other some sports club, and the other adults. Uh, they doing meetups, schools, whatever. This uh, this uh, idea of influencers uh, it's, it's it's fantastic. So um, yeah. what do you, what do you see as a response? from the people when you talk in, in your community about the Bitcoin, are people are open or they like uh, struggling to understand or everybody knows uh, what the Bitcoin is? So um, from, from, um, from, from my observation, if I am to rate it over zero to 10, I would say I've had like about 2% rejection and then 8% approval. Yeah, uh, because in Ghana, uh, I hit you with the problems Bitcoin is solving. There's a lot of information that people in Ghana are not privy to. You would think your life is normal until you get to know 
whoa, you have been living or you have been doing something wrong all the time. So once you hit them like that, they're like, oh, really? So you get them to get a difference between when a bank is saving your money, whereas saving in Bitcoin. You make the comparison there. They make the, they make the, you, you, you bring down scenarios, they make the analogy themselves, and then you, you leave them to think. You okay. look at the charges we incur, making just basic transfers between our normal moment. You look at the charges you incur, having a bank to keep your money in Ghana, having the Momo service run your money, having to even receive money from abroad, having to send money from abroad. The kind of opportunities you are missing because you don't have an international bank account, you don't have access to a Visa card, you don't have access to a MasterCard to be able to make payments. You want to pay for an online tuition. You cannot do that because the current systems are not giving you opportunities to do that. If you don't have this kind of information, how are you going to break out of this? We are just helping people to break out of that that kind of shell we find ourselves in. We are in a world whereby information is free right now. Uh, we're pushing for a borderless um, world. So you can have access to whatever information you want to have access to. You can pay for tuition outside at the minimum, very rare, at the minimum uh, uh, um, cost. You should be able to access um, emergency services because the bank is closed and you can have, have access to Momo. They are doing an update three, four, five days. It's not there. Okay, you send a transfer. You need to pay for grandma's uh, 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 hospital bill. And they are taking her out today. The transfer was right today. It's going to arrive like in three, four, five days. It means she's going to be thrown out until the transfer gets in, then you can get it. Whilst Bitcoin is giving us instant transactions, it is right in your face, there and there. Bitcoin is solving Problems unimaginable in Africa. These are, I mean, top layer, I mean, surface level problems. But then when you get down into, into uh, communities, you, you notice there are a whole lot of problems Bitcoin is going to solve and is helping us solve. So when you have this problem at hand and you know you have a tool that can solve it, you're not going to object it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, and of course, the tool. If, if you're talking about this, yeah, if you're talking about the financial freedom, it's uh, it's uh, easy to understand. But okay, and uh, what what is yeah. uh, your future goal with the with the project with the Bitcoin Coris for the future? So um, currently, Bitcoin Coris, oh, we have a limited number of people. We have about eight people uh, running Bitcoin Coris now. So now we are running the Bitcoinator. We are going to run the Bitcoinator uh, for as long as we can even if the teams would have to change because we are looking at building a, a sustainable team that will keep on educating people. But the long goal, uh, as the Bitcoin ecosystem is growing and evolving, uh, Bitcoin carries will evolve and we are going to grow with uh, uh, as long as um, things are growing. So we might come out with some products uh, on the Bitcoin layer. Uh, we might offer some services as well. And we were looking at collaborations and partnerships with other higher Bitcoin educational um, outfits out there. Because our aim is to educate. We're looking forward to collaborate with anyone that is aimed at pushing Bitcoin adoption education in Africa and Ghana. We are open. We will team up with you and we will deliver as we, we stand to be. Are you cooperating with the Bitcoin Beach from Salvador? Yes, uh, I'm collaborating with the Bitcoin Beach from El Salvador together with Herman on Bitcoin Bright. It's also another, yes, it's also another Bitcoin circular economy coming up. He is, uh, he wasn't a Bitcoiner, but Herman and Paco and a couple of Bitcoiners went to the beach, the orange building. Then I followed up with education with him. I was visiting him almost the weekends to educate him on Bitcoin. And yeah. His seven outfits is accepting Bitcoin. We have bonded a couple of shops, local shops on the beach to accept Bitcoin. We've already built as many people in the community uh, as well. Uh, it, it wasn't as aggressive last year, but this year with the Bitcoinator coming in, uh, we are going to go. We are going to be more. We are going to visit them more often 
to spark up activities because I noticed my presence and then uh, turning up activities within the community sparked the interest. So if we should go there in our numbers again, the interest is going to uh, stand up again. Even though there are shops, there are three shops and then Mr. Bright's house is, is already accepting Bitcoin. We still need to do more in the community and then Bitcoin Beach is supporting us to do that. Okay, and... Uh, Same as... Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Same as on the... Okay. <laughs> okay, and yeah. uh, what is your uh, social network? So if people want to follow you or support you, where they can find you? Okay, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Kauris Kumi, soon as you type Kauris Kumi, C-O-W-R-I-E-S-K-U-M-I, I will pop up. And if you want to follow Bitcoin Kauris, it's at Bitcoin Kauris. Yeah at Bitcoin Carries. And I also need you to follow the Bitcoinator because we're going to do a lot of updates on the Bitcoinator. Now we're going to document all our activities on the Bitcoinator uh, as the trip unfolds. So we are getting it ready. I know people are anxious to see how, how the trips are going to unfold. We are also uh, preparing, making sure all our recce's are right. So once we make a move, we know we are hitting uh, our, our objective. So follow Bitcoinator is Bitcoinator WA on Twitter and on Instagram. We are going to put all updates on there. And you can track the hashtag Trezor Academy as well. You will tag the Trezor Academy. So once you type that on Twitter, you can see all updates that will be posted from there. This is, uh, as you mentioned in the Bitcoinator, for me, it's uh, like a very fantastic to see this, this, uh, this process, because I was uh, on the first Bitcoin ETA in, in Buenos Aires. I saw the second Bitcoin ETA wow. in Salvador. I, I saw the uh, Bitcoin ETA, Bitcoin ETA, and now uh, this this uh, growing Bitcoin ETA all, uh, all over the world is just fantastic. So, um, yeah. Okay, uh, last question that I have for you. Uh, asking everybody on all those interviews the same question. What Bitcoin means to you personally? Bitcoin means freedom to me. Yeah. That's it, one word. One word. Okay. And it entails a lot. I mean, it... so let me add this bit. So when I started moving out to talk to people about Bitcoin, a certain part of me, I discovered a certain part of me I never even knew as a state. You carry a lot of love. It, it, there's there's some kind of responsibility of love of love on you to make sure everybody who needs help or who needs to know what Bitcoin is needs to know. So that is the responsibility I'm carrying right now, and I feel it's freedom and love. That's fantastic. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. We we wish you all the best for all the goals that you, you want to achieve and congratulations for this great work that you are doing in your community. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ivan. Thanks for having me.